Ladies and gents, welcome to Sujib Reacts, and this is Aliens Under the Ice, live on Rogue Planets by the channel Kuz Gazad in a Shell. Out in the vast coldness of outer space, there are planets that travel alone through darkness without the boundaries of a system. Here's how this can happen, and why those frozen deserts might secretly harbor alien life. But yeah, I think you know one of his latest video. I guess in, in this year, kind of we saw how a planet when it's you know kicked out of the solar system, how that happened. That's kind of similar to this. Right, so basically, all the life inside the ocean with uh, chemosynthesis would basically survive. Uh, you know, by uh, not photosynthesis, obviously there is no sun, but chemosynthesis. So that that is the one way to survive, I guess. You know, uh, when uh, first of all people looking for life outside, uh, you know, they were uh, seeing this uh, Goldilocks zone, right, just far away from the sun where the Earth is right now. Compared to the sun, there is a zone where there could be a liquid water. But then they realize, oh wait a minute, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, in that zone. Uh, moons of the gas giants could also harbor life because of the tidal forces from the all these gas giants probably, you know, stretches and compresses these moons. And if there is any, uh, you know, frozen uh, water there, it could heat it up and make it liquid water, like how it's on Europa, right? Uh, first people saw all these cracks and things on Europa that made them realize wait a minute there must be a liquid water inside that's why the tidal forces basically creates these cracks on top of the top of the ice and then water comes up and f gets frozen again that's why there are all these lines there so you know the, there could be something you know uh, that is something that people realize that wait a minute Goldilocks zone can also stretch out like that so it's not hard to imagine that, you know, in the rogue planets, basically, there because through chemosynthesis, because core would be still hot, through chemosynthesis, there could be still be life inside uh, the oceans, basically. So yeah, let's watch it. Remember, if you like my next one, like, subscribe, check out the video, there's a link in the description, check out the cast, we'll the link cards, and yeah, let's watch it. Rogue planets are planets that travel through the universe alone. They inhabit the dark and vast space between the stars. Drifting alone through eternal darkness, no light warms their surfaces and they're exposed to the freezing cold of outer space. They know no seasons, no days and no nights which could give away the passing of time. And yet, rogue planets might carry alien life to all corners of the galaxy. How would that work? And how does a planet become a rogue anyway? Oh God. Imagine a star just basically, you know, passed through our solar system and flings all these planets outwards. There are several very different things that get called rogue planets. For example, sub-brown dwarfs, gas giants that form from collapsing gas clouds and are the boring little brothers of brown dwarfs. They're a sort of failed star and we'll now stop talking about them. A far more interesting sort of rogue are terrestrial planets similar to Earth that got kicked out of their planetary system. Young star systems are dangerous places where protoplanets are battling for the available mass, guzzling up as much material as possible. In this fight for dominance, they collide with each other or get dangerously close to each other's orbits. If a very massive planet moves its orbit closer to the star, it can kick smaller planets out of the system. But just because a planet has survived the growing pains of formation doesn't mean it's safe. Planetary systems can be disrupted by flybys from stars or black holes at any point. Up to half of all planets born... I'm not gonna lie, flyby by stars and black holes is a pretty scary sentence there. ...end up as rogues. The scientists don't agree on the numbers, but it's likely that, at the very least, there are billions of rogue planets in the Milky Way alone. Most rogues will share the same depressing fate. As their star becomes smaller day by day, the planet's surface quickly cools down to minus 270 degrees Celsius. If they have oceans, they'll freeze and become as hard as bedrock. Their atmospheres will sink down to the surface and eventually freeze too. But weirdly enough, some of these frozen dark deserts could harbor life. To understand how, let's imagine a planet similar to Earth in the same order of magnitude in terms of mass and composition. If we put it into deep space, how could it still support life? As far as we understand the nature of life, there is one indispensable ingredient it needs, liquid water. Yeah, as far as we water know. Water is important because it mixes things, both matter and energy, which lets interesting chemistry happen, like life. 
so our planet needs enough energy to keep at least a part of our oceans warm enough to sustain liquid water. Annoyingly, about 99.97% of Earth's energy budget comes from the Sun, so our imaginary rogue Earth needs to work with the 0.03% of energy it has left, which almost exclusively comes from its hot center. Yeah. Earth's inner core is a giant metal ball, about as hot as the surface of the Sun, that's surrounded by the outer core made up of liquid metals that are very, very slowly solidifying, releasing a lot of heat in the process. As long as this process is ongoing, our planet will be geologically active, yeah, for with billions solid of years. liquid material moving around and transporting energy to the surface where it can be harnessed as geothermal energy. While the hot core of every planet will cool off eventually, this process takes billions of years, enough time for life to come into existence and thrive. There's even one scenario that could allow an Earth-like planet to have oceans that are not frozen over. If the planet had an extremely dense and high-pressure hydrogen atmosphere, the gas would not freeze and could trap enough of the heat trying to escape the planet to enable oceans that extend all the way to the surface. And there's another possible way to stay warm, moons. If a rogue planet brings a moon or more along with them, a large enough moon could inject additional energy into the system via tidal forces. These forces stretch and squeeze the planet a little bit every day, yeah, like that's kneading dough, how... keeping it warm. But the most that's how it works on Europa. So, but you know, not just moon. Imagine a gas giant as a rogue planet and a moon, our size moon, basically, and you know, gas giant basically pumping energy inside. That would be ideal, right? That would be like Europa's case. The likely scenario for a rogue bearing life is one with subglacial oceans under a kilometer thick layer of mostly water ice. These are not completely absurd since we already have a few of them in the Europa, solar system. Yeah. So how could life sustain itself at the bottom of a completely dark, cold ocean? On Earth, deep down in our oceans in complete darkness, in volcanically active areas, there are hydrothermal vents called black smokers. Mm. They spew out a cloud of black material and hot water, providing a constant flow of minerals from Earth's mantle. Bacteria feed on the minerals and produce organic materials, which attracts crustaceans, bivalves, snails, fish, octopus and tube worms up to two meters long. Not only are hydrothermal vents home to an incredibly diverse group of living beings, but also a contender for the place where life could have begun on Earth billions of years ago. Yeah. In the dark ocean of a rogue planet, similar vents or volcanic activity could be the starting point and basis for complex ecosystems we can only imagine right now. One upside an ecosystem in a rogue planet ocean has is that the environment is extremely stable. The thick ice sheet protects it from all sorts of extinction events, and as long as the energy from the core keeps on coming, things stay pretty much the same. Yeah, it definitely protects from all the radiation, right? That would be the biggest issue, but if there's an ice sheet on top, that would definitely work. The most likely for- Because there's a tons of radiation coming from, I guess, Jupiter. But, you know, Europa's ice sheet on top would probably protect from that, so there could be life thriving there. And because all the all the cracks that opens up and all the water that comes up and refreeze freeze it again, you just have to drill it and you know find a fist there, I guess, because it would have been frozen up there. Forms of life are bacteria and other microorganisms, but given enough time, more complex alien animals could feed on the smaller beings and thrive. It's not impossible that intelligent life could emerge in such an environment. If it did, it would find itself in a pretty weird world. Constricted by an impassable wall of rock-hard ice at the top and bedrock at the bottom. Without any plants to store star energy, there would be no wood, oil or coal. Even if there were, it's not like you'd discover fire at the bottom of an ocean. Without this energy, metals may never be forged into useful things. I guess intelli intelligence would come to a point and then stop because you need certain things to, I guess, experiment and, you know, advance your civilization to become that level of intelligent. Our intelligent alien friends might never break through the ice. They might never realize that there is such a thing as outside and assume that their small world is all there is. Millions of generations might live and die in these dark oceans, ignorant of the unbelievably big universe above the ice, until the core of their planet cools off and all life vanishes. Damn, As the that's oceans grim. completely freeze, the remnants of cultures and ecosystems will be trapped in an icy grave forever. If you think about it, it might be better not to be aware of all that. But yeah. the concept is disturbing and exciting.
the universe might be teeming with life. Tra yeah, but what if that rogue planet gets you know caught, you know, catch by some kind of a star or something? Then there's a I guess rosy future. Tom planets that are basically impossible to leave. Worlds like this could frequently pass the solar system without us even knowing. Maybe one day, in the far future, humans will set foot on one of these frozen worlds and try to say hello. Okay, so we love gloomy future scenarios. Yeah, if they try to say hello like that with cutting a hole, yeah, that would be problematic with all the radiation. But let's go back to the present for a different kind of surprise. Many of you want to know how we make our videos, so we made a video about that. Kortskazant teamed up with Skillshare, our favorite online learning community for creators. Yeah, people, uh, go to the original video page link and from there, support this channel. Yeah, so, uh, rogue planets, basically just like the moons of gas and they could have the life as well, right? I mean, uh, you know, ideal thing would be some gas giant is a rogue planet, right? And their moon, Earth-sized moon probably, uh, having, you know, all the ice and water with the tidal forces could have liquid water. That could be, you know, something chemo chemosynthesis basically would, you know, make sure there's life there for a long, long time. So, yeah. All right, well, that was the aliens under the ice life on rogue planets by the channel Kuskaz and Nutshell. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the Rick Sandy, there's a link in the description, check out the castle, play, check out the in cards, and yeah, I'll see you next time.